Morning San Antonio starts right now. It is Friday, December 9th. We'll get to weather and traffic in just a moment. But right now, we want to get some late breaking news. WNBA star Brittany Grinder landing on U.S. soil after that 10 month ordeal, of bargaining and negotiations between Russia, Russia and the American government. Grinder is expected to land at Kelly Field, a joint use facility, this morning. We've had crews overnight on standby. Let's go straight to Jonathan Coto with the latest. Jonathan. Good morning, Mike. Uh, Mark, uh, in fact, a lot of anticipation uh, behind Griner's arrival. I can, in fact, tell you that her plane just landed here at Kelly Field. I'll step out of the way for we can show you those images. This happening right now. Brittany Grinder touching down on U.S. soil after a long 10-month period. The 32-year-old is a double Olympic champion and a seven-time All-Star player in the WNBA. This is what we know. She was detained February 17th at Moscow's airport. She had been on her way to Ekaterinburg to rejoin her club for the playoffs after spending time at home in the United States. She was found with vape cartridges containing cannabis oil in her luggage that violated Russian law. And the U.S. Griner did have a prescription for medical marijuana to relieve pain from her chronic injuries, but we know Griner pleaded guilty to the charges of possessing and smuggling illegal drugs but insisted she had made an honest mistake and had not intended to break Russian law. She did testify that she did not understand how the cartridges had ended up in her luggage and speculated that she could have packed them inadvertently as she rushed to make her flight. Again, Griner arriving here at Kelly Field. It's roughly 4.31 a.m. This has been a long anticipated situation. We know her family uh, this is something that her family has been praying for, hoping for, and uh, that day has finally come for Brittany Grinder and, of course, everyone that loves her. Uh, we do know her lawyer said on November 17th that she had been taken to a female penal colony in Yavas. This is a town in the Mordovia region, southeast of Moscow. And we can tell you that the 32-year-old is, uh, again, a double Olympic champion and had a seven-time All-Star player record in the WNBA. Right now, folks, there you have it, the long-awaited arrival of Brittany Griner, finally on American soil. She just touched U.S. soil here at Kelly Field. We're not too far from Brook Army Medical Center, where we know she will be receiving medical evaluation. And now we will just have to, to wait and, and uh, see her Leave the plane, of course, this is gonna be a process. This is gonna be a story that we're gonna be covering all morning long and bringing you the latest as this story develops. Again, this is a story we're gonna stay on top of. We know she's gonna be heading to Brook Army Medical uh, Center where she's gonna be checked for or have a medical evaluation. We bring you the latest. Live from Kelly Field, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. All right, great job out there, Jonathan. And of course, we'll have a video go back to that shot as soon as we see Brittany exit the aircraft. Uh, interesting, though. Security is obviously tight. There's a giant fuel right. truck, though, kind of blocking our view. That may not be an accident, but we'll uh, return to that scene as soon as possible. I wonder if we're going to be able to actually see her get off that plane. But as soon as we do know, we'll let you guys know. But first, let's talk weather this morning. Mike? Our countdown, four days. Okay. So this is how we're going to, we're not even going to talk about this kind of weather just because we're we'll look forward to the front. Just looking ahead. Look to ahead to the front, which is coming through on Tuesday because now until then, we got four more days of this. Same thing. Least visibility is pretty good out there. We do have a little bit of mist here and there. Also some fog up around Burning Stage. We're starting to see hints of that fog, New Braunfels, and then it's really starting to thicken up. Go down 37 in toward Pleasanton. Head out 10 in toward Gonzales. A lot of fog there. Yesterday Yesterday, there was plenty of it off to the west, not as much right now, so most of it is confined this morning. I mean, obviously, there's some out there in the hill country, but the majority and the thickest is down to the southeast. Got to keep a lookout for this throughout the rest of the morning because, as has been the case the past couple of mornings, it is going to be thickening up at times. Temperatures, once again, way, way on the warm side, mid upper 60s, a couple of low 70s out there. By the way, we tied the record yesterday for the warmest low temperature. We only got down to 70 yesterday. We're not 
going to be hitting any records uh, for low temperatures this morning, but it's still very warm. Mold is on the high side and throughout the rest of the morning temperatures again stay fairly steady and we'll have a little bit of fog, a little bit of mist here and there. And then like yesterday, we're going to see going to call it partly cloudy skies going to be warm up to 81. Still going to be warm through the weekend. Slightly better rain chances later tomorrow into Sunday, and we'll talk about when that front moves through exactly and what happens in behind it. How much how far those temperatures are going to be dropping down. Sarah Mark. Mike, thank you very much to some other morning headlines. A 23 year old man accused of murdering three University of Virginia football players last month made his first court appearance. Chris Jones Jr. has not entered a plea yet and authorities have not released a possible motive, leaving many questions unanswered. The 22 year old is accused of killing three UVA football players and injuring two other students. Legal experts believe Jones's next hearing is March 30th, which is when we could potentially see upgraded charges. Idaho police are now searching for a white car seen outside the home where four college students were killed more than three weeks ago. Investigators want to talk to the driver and any passengers who may have been in that car. Police say information about the sedan and at least one person seen inside of that car came from some of the 6,000 tips they've received from the public. Police haven't found a murder weapon or named a suspect in this case. Let's go back to Jonathan Cotto out of Kelly Field where Brittany Griner's plane has just landed. Jonathan. Jonathan, are we seeing her on the ground at this point? We're going to take us again. Here we go. I'm on. What's all right? What's all right? What's Go ahead, guys. If you hey, can folks, hear us, take it away. This is Jonathan Cotto. We're here at Kelly Field where um, the airplane carrying Brittany Griner. We know the, the athlete Brittany Griner just landed. The door of that plane just opening up in any second now. The athlete is expected to step out here at Kelly Field. Of course, we know she will be heading over to Bam C. Brook Army Medical Center where she will be uh, evaluated medically. Uh, we don't know how long she will be there for, but we do know this has been a situation that's been months in, in, in the works, a situation that has required a number of negotiations between the American and Russian governments. That day has finally arrived for Brittany Breiner and her family. Again, we are waiting for her to step out of the plane. Now, in any moment, we do see some movement here now, some people getting off the plane. I can tell you the plane just landed about maybe five minutes ago. The onboarding process has already begun. We do know Griner will be making her way over to BAMC for medical evaluation. Again, how long she will be at the center is, is not certain. Jonathan, thank you very much. Uh, back here in the studio, we're going to stand we're that. We're going to continue to follow closely and bring you the latest. Again, on your screen is the aircraft carrying Brittany Griner. Just arrived here in San Antonio at Kelly Field. We just received confirmation that Brittany Griner just got off the plane. Again, this is a story that we're going to continue to provide you the latest. All right, Jonathan, thank you very much for that coverage. Army Medical Center. Jonathan, Jonathan thank you. Reporting. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, you know, we weren't sure who got off that plane. We saw several people. Um, it's dark, though, and, it's, and dark. it's and we're at it quite a distance there, so a bit of a dis disadvantage, obviously, assuming one of those folks there is Brittany Grider headed over. All right, we're having some audio difficulties, so we are going to wait for more information. And uh, again, a jet carrying Brittany Griner has landed here in the U.S. Uh, in San Antonio, Kelly Field, en route to Brook Army Medical Center for a detailed medical evaluation. All right, it's 438 and 68 degrees. Well, still ahead on GMS, playoff football continues tonight for the UIW Cardinals, but they've got to win on the road to keep their season alive. And go Spurs go. They had a chance to end their losing streak against the Rockets. How they got a boost in front of the home crowd. That's next. And checking traffic right now. See how things are looking out there. I don't know what's going on at 37 and Fair Avenue, but uh, right now a much better shot at 37 at Southeast Military and 410 and Old Pearsall Road. Let's take a look outside with live cam. 68 degrees, kind of the same song and dance with the weather, but Mike says four days. It's going to be singing a different tune. He'll have our forecast when we come back.
The two teams at the bottom of the Western Conference standings went head to head last night at the AT&T Center. Spurs hosting the Rockets trying to avoid their 12th straight loss. Keldon Johnson off to a hot start with 19 first half points, but the Spurs trail by three at the break. However, it was a Triesta in the third for the Silver and Black. Spurs knocked down four straight threes as part of a 14-2 run to take a five-point lead. The lead would grow to 14 with Doug McDermott rain down a pair of threes. At one point, the Spurs went up by 20. Seven Spurs players in double figures. Keldon Johnson led the way with 32. Spurs snapped that 11-game losing streak, finally winning 118-109. You know, it feels good to be back in the win column for sure. Um, I don't think any of us have, has lost that many games in a row. You know, you got to stay positive, continue to push for it every single day, continue to um, watch film, get better, just con keep controlling what we could control. Uh, we'd be able to, you know, get out of the slump sooner, sooner or later. Next up for the Spurs, they are hitting the road in South Beach tomorrow. They'll take on the Heat in Miami. Tip-off is set for 4 p.m. Also looking ahead, good luck to University of Incarnate Word Cardinals, who will face number two seeded Sacramento State in the FCS quarterfinals tonight at Hornet Stadium in Sacramento. The Cardinals are looking to hand the Hornets their first and only loss of the season after they went 12-0 so far. UIW quarterback Lindsey Scott Jr. comes into this game with 55 touchdowns and over 4,000 yards in the air. Cardinals coming off a close 41-38 victory against Furman that included a game-winning touchdown at home. Good luck, guys. Go Cardinals. All right, it's 443 and 68 degrees. Still ahead before 5 on GMSA. A new drama starring Will Smith streaming now on Apple TV. How a true story of a slave trying to escape to freedom made it to Hollywood. And a local convenience store is in hot water with the health department for not having hot water. The inspector pulling their license and closing their kitchen. In this morning's GMA First Look, a One Tree Hill actress is speaking out about the tragic death of her beloved husband. Here's Ariel Rochef with the latest. In this morning's GMA First Look, One Tree Hill alum Bevan Prince speaking out in her first TV interview about the tragic death of her beloved husband. The couple was boating during the 4th of July weekend when the unthinkable happened. Will was struck by lightning. Bevan left to face a life without the man she calls her soulmate. You've said that this is larger than you. There was a lot of divinity in it. He was 33 years old. It was July 3rd. And I believe the exact time that the lightning struck was 3.13 p.m. So knowing that all the resources were there to potentially save him, I have to believe that something bigger beyond me was calling him. Bevan now focusing on giving back to her community to honor Will's memory. And coming up at 7 a.m., more of our exclusive interview. With your GMA First Look, I'm Ariel Reshef, ABC News, Wrightsville Beach, North Carolina. Back here at home, health inspectors forcing a convenience store to temporarily shut down their kitchen and two gyms restaurants cited for being dirty for employees not using gloves. All three businesses have made repeat appearances on Behind the Kitchen Door. One establishment showing Tim Gerber the corrections they've already made. Hi, I'm Tim with KSAT 12 News. I do the behind the kitchen door. I stopped by the 410 corner store in the 2300 block of Northeast Loop 410 to ask about a recent inspection that forced them to temporarily shut down. The same business featured on BKD just five months ago when they had an 80. A new inspection in October resulted in a 71. Eggs were being stored in a bucket at room temp. Tomatoes inside a fridge had mold on them. And there was even more mold inside the ice machine. Their biggest violation, no hot water. Heating element is no working on that day. Health inspectors immediately shut down the kitchen until repairs were made a few days later. They check everything is good. Then they say, OK, you can open the kitchen now. They now have their sights set on higher scores. Should be 95 or 95, 96. We can do it. This gym's in the 8200 block of Marbach was just featured on BKD in October when they got an 82. An inspection in November resulted in a 76. They had to throw out chorizo found under a grill temping at 100 degrees. All of the food in a cooler next to the grill was also tossed because it was too warm. The cooks weren't wearing gloves and no one washed their hands during the inspection. Employees also seen pushing around dirty food water on the floor due to a clogged drain. 
daily inspections were ordered until all issues were resolved. This Jim's at Culebra and Loop 1604 is back with an 80, a slight improvement from the 76 they had when we featured them back in June. They had numerous hand washing violations this time around, including a worker touching raw chicken, then returning to cook other foods without washing their hands or changing gloves. Another worker was eating while washing dishes. The whole place needed a serious cleaning, the inspector noting they need to intensify cleaning efforts, including removing mold from the walls and food buildup in soils on the floors, walls, and ceiling. That's what's happening behind the kitchen door. Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. Well, by late afternoon, we did see a little bit of sun yep. yesterday. We're hoping Finally. that trend continues because the morning clouds have been thick all week long. Okay, question though, would you rather keep the clouds if it would, were to keep temperatures now? Because you get that sunshine, we got up into the 80s again yesterday. I don't, mind, again. I don't mind clouds in the morning and then, you know, sun between like 1 and 4. I'm with her. Yeah. Even if it puts those temperatures way up in the 80s. Yeah, yeah I mean. Uh, okay, well, case in point, yeah, we did have plenty of... Uh, Plenty of sunshine mixed in with some of those clouds yesterday, and that's going to be the situation again today. So, yes, it is going to be another very, very warm one. Thank you very much. Look at those beautiful blue skies out there. Notwithstanding the fact that temperatures were um, about 15 degrees above normal, and there's all of our morning clouds hanging around here. We do have some fog, not anything too bad around the airport. Randolph over there, Port SA, five miles visibility. It's okay heading up into the hill country, but this morning, go down 37, go out 10, you're going to run into some of the thickest fog. Half mile visibility, Pleasanton. Same thing at Gonzales, Beeville. So just be on the lookout. New Braunfels has some fog, and it will get thicker at times throughout the course of the morning. As far as temperatures, uh, once again, going to be staying pretty steady. We'll bottom out 69 this morning, and a couple of those little sprinkles out there, that's the 20% chance for, you know, a little bit of mist here or there, something like that with some of this fog, then more sunshine later on today. And yep, it is going to be a warm one getting up into, once again, the 15 degree above normal range up in the low 80s later on with sort of that mixture of uh, sunshine and clouds, calling it partly cloudy skies, which computer models are indicating uh, fairly well with some of these clouds breaking up, then they'll start to move back in here overnight. I think we keep more clouds around tomorrow and a couple of more showers. Now it's not going to be a big deal as far as rain. Actually, this model is not really bullish on that. They mostly come in here in the overnight hours, late tomorrow evening, past dinner time, probably mid evening, and then in the overnight hours into Sunday and even a couple of lingering ones going on into Sunday. It's not going to be a big deal, but just a couple of regular old showers as opposed to, <clears throat> excuse me, just the morning mist and drizzle, which we'll still have up through Tuesday morning. And you can see the humidity remains fairly high up in the 60s for dew point temperatures. So that means you can't really drop below that because you can't drop down below what the dew point is. So the low temperatures stay in the 60s. But then we have the front moving through here, and that's going to really, really clear out all that humidity. That will allow temperatures to drop down, and it'll be a lot more comfortable and feel a whole heck of a lot more like uh, December weather going into the middle and latter portion of the week. So Tuesday, we will be at 65 in the afternoon. And then as you can see, we get progressively cooler and actually below normal high temperatures by the latter part of the week. The low temperatures will Tuesday start off about 65. So we're going to be kind of an either steady or almost a little bit of an upside down day on uh, on Tuesday. And then finally, now that looks like it's really, really cold. It's finally back down to the normal low temperature by Thursday and Friday. So the forecast today, we are going to be very warm. We'll start not very warm, obviously 77 at noon, mostly cloudy skies, mist, drizzle, some fog this morning, and then partly cloudy skies later on today up to 81. Now tomorrow, hanging hanging with more clouds and then that chance for well after some morning mist and drizzle and some fog we are going to be seeing a uh, chance for a couple of showers late tomorrow night Sunday not a great shot at rain and then the front moves through on Tuesday so back to December okay thank you thank you Mike. you're welcome <laughs> four days and counting okay 454 68 degrees on your Friday morning up next, a new movie that's drawing some Oscar buzz is set to hit theaters today. We'll have the preview in your morning spotlight. In your morning spotlight, a new movie that's drawing some Oscar buzz focusing on mental health. And a slavery drama that's based on a true story is out on Apple TV. Here's ABC's Jason Nathanson with the latest. Look around you. 
This whole place is for people who want to escape. People who don't belong anywhere else. The new film Empire of Light is very personal for writer-director Sam Mendes. It's about the mental health issues his mother struggled with when he was growing up. And he tells me one of the safe spaces to which he would escape was the movies. For me, it's a place of comfort, and warmth and acceptance and, and, and imagination. You know, a place you lose yourself in and, and in the dark. Empire of Light stars Olivia Colman. It's in theaters today. I will come back to you! Streaming today, it's the slavery drama Emancipation, based on a true story. Will Smith stars as a slave trying to escape to freedom. Ben Foster plays the guy trying to hunt him down. And Foster tells me Smith is on another level in the film. I respect his work immensely. I think it's the finest performance he's, uh, he's ever given, and that's saying a lot. Emancipation started streaming today on Apple TV+. Plus. Good morning, aviators. This is your captain speaking. Top Gun Maverick flying to new heights. The film named Best of the Year by the National Board of Review. Best director went to Steven Spielberg for The Fablemans. And happy know. birthday to I Lori Grenier. The, the Shark Tank star is 53 today, back. while Oscar-winning actress Dame Judi Dench is 88. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathans in ABC News, Los Angeles. 458 and 67 degrees. Live look right now at Kelly Field where Brittany Griner's jet has landed here in San Antonio. There it is live. We're going to check in with Jonathan Cotto coming up in our next half hour. Taking a look outside with Trans Guy, looks like we have a big crash or accident of some sort at 410 and Culebra. Our Stephen Cavazos just walked in to the studio. He's going to have the latest on that when we come back. Case at 12. Good morning. Good morning. San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. I'm Jonathan Cotto. The WNBA star finally touching down on U.S. soil will bring you the latest on her arrival. History making legislation now bound for President Biden's desk for signature. I'm ABC's Justin Finch in Washington. Ahead, a closer look at the bipartisan passage of the Respect for Marriage Act. And we've made it to Friday. It's been a very warm first full week of December. Mike Ostrage is standing by with a preview of your weekend forecast. Good morning. It's Friday, December 9th. Happy to be in for Steph this morning. We'll get to your top stories coming up and check on traffic right now. But right here we go straight to Mike Ostrage with a preview of our Friday. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, Friday is starting off like yesterday, day before that, so on and so forth and everything uh, in between. And we've got temperatures that are extremely warm and humid right now. Plus, we've got some fog to deal with out there. Take a look at some of these numbers and you can see we've got visibility that has dropped down now heading out I-10 in toward Gonzalez, just a quarter mile visibility two up the road at New Braunfels. So it has gotten a bit thicker out there. It's also dropped down somewhat at uh, Pleasanton down to just one mile visibility. A hint of fog there at Port SA. Not bad elsewhere, but just like the past couple of days where it's going to start to get thicker at times, a little bit of mist, a little bit of drizzle here and there. So just kind of keep that in mind. And uh, yeah, most everybody is seeing a little bit of fog here and there. The majority of it obviously down to the uh, southeast. So you go down 37 in toward the coastal plain Beeville at zero visibility. As of right now, temperatures are once again way above normal by a good oh gee, 20, 25 degrees at least. Yesterday, by the way, we did uh, tie the record. We stayed at 70, which is the warmest low temperature for yesterday's day. So this morning, some mist and fog, then mixture of sunshine and clouds, kind of like yesterday, low 80s, like yesterday, 15 degrees above normal. We will continue with this trend over the weekend, upper 70s, mid 60s for the highs and lows respectively, and a couple of showers going to be possible, a little bit of a disturbance late tomorrow night into Sunday. Not a big deal as far as rain is concerned. Then this trend continues into the first part of next week, but a cold front is going to be moving through on Tuesday. Tuesday, finally, and it'll feel like December after that. All the details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, good morning, sir. A big problem out there, right? Yeah, not a good morning over here, Mike. Unfortunately, 410 Kulebra, big problem. Let's get a look at Trans Guide. So this crash actually came in just before 430 this morning, and it looks like we're catching the tail end of it, which means uh, that this is going to be wrapping up pretty soon. But notice that we do have a few first responders out there and two vehicles actually on those tow trucks right now. So 
Hope everyone's doing okay out there, but of course, Gulebda 410 at Gulebda is usually a busy spot in the morning, so we were seeing a little bit of a buildup there. Thankfully, it's kind of quieted down in the southbound lanes where the crash was reported, but still, be on the lookout this morning. Thankfully, there's not a lot else to show you here on the map, just some quiet roadways. And if you plan on traveling into the Alamo City, the roadways will be pretty much clear for you there. On I-10 eastbound right now, you can expect a 24-minute drive time if you're heading in from Bernie. A little bit of a slowdown, 28 minutes on 281 southbound if you're traveling in from Bulverde this early. And right now, I-35 southbound heading in from New Braunfels, a 25-minute drive time if you, uh, you plan to hit the roadways. But again, taking it back here to this shot, 410 at Gulebra, it does look like two vehicles may have been involved. We'll continue to watch this area closely and have updates on road closures right here in the next few minutes. Mark Sarah. Stephen, thank you very much. New this morning, Brittany Griner officially on U.S. soil. That's right. She landed at Kelly Field about 30 minutes ago this morning. We have had crews out there all morning on standby. Let's go to Jonathan Cotto for the very latest. Good morning. Good morning, Mark. That's right. There's a lot of anticipation. There was a lot of anticipation behind Brittany Griner's arrival here at Kelly Field. I can tell you there is a number of media outlets here in attendance, and I'm up against this fence here at Kelly Field. This was our best uh, vantage point to see Griner's plane land here this morning. We saw those moments. We can take a look at what that scene looked like when she arrived. We know that it was hard for us to, to tell exactly who Griner was. It is dark out here this morning, but let's talk about how all this started. We know President Joe Biden making that announcement yesterday that a swamp had been made for Griner's release. Uh, the 32-year-old is a double Olympic champion, a seven-time All-Star player with the WNBA. She was detained February 17th at Moscow's airport, and she had been on her way to Ekaterinburg to rejoin her club for the playoffs after spending time at home in the United States. Uh, she was found with vape cartridges containing cannabis oil in her luggage that violated Russian law. We know Griner pleaded guilty to those charges. However, she was convicted and found guilty of deliberately bringing cannabis-infused vape cartridges into Russia on August 4th. Now, her lawyer said on November 17th that she had been uh, taken to a female penal colony in Yabas. This is a town in the Mordovia region, southeast of Moscow. But the long-awaited period of time for Griner has finally arrived, you know, after a over almost over 10 months she is finally on u.s soil and of course mark sarah this is a story that we're going to be following closely we do know she'll be heading over to bamsey for some type of medical evaluation and we're going to be following this story and bringing you the latest live from kelly field jonathan Cotto, keys at 12 news Jonathan, thank you. A MacArthur High School teacher accused of sexually assaulting a student is now facing charges. 49-year-old Jay Casey Stewart was arrested and taken into Bear County Jail Thursday evening. San Antonio police say Stewart left written messages for the 16-year-old victim on Tuesday, including her phone number. Investigators say she took the teen to a motel near her home and sexually assaulted him there. The teen reported the incident Wednesday, but Stewart denied having any sexual contact with the student. She faces charges of sexual assault with a child and improper relationship between an educator and student. Over on Capitol Hill, a new bill is expected to make changes here in military, CDUSA and beyond. The House passed a measure that would get rid of the COVID vaccine mandate for military members. The bill would also provide funding for national defense. Now the legislation will head to the Senate where it's expected to pass before heading to President Biden's desk. More than 8,000 active duty service members were discharged when they refused the COVID vaccine. Some morning headlines, a history-making vote on Capitol Hill, the House passing the Respect for Marriage Act. That bill codifies federal protections for same-sex and interracial marriages, and now it head to the, heads to the president's desk. ABC's Justin Finch has more from Washington. On the House floor, a milestone moment. The motion is adopted. In a rare show of bipartisan solidarity, Congress passing the Respect for Marriage Act, enshrining marriage equality into federal law. 39 House Republicans and 12 in the Senate joining every Democrat to pass legislation protecting same-sex and interracial marriages. Some Republicans pleaded for their party members to vote no, calling the bill unnecessary. I hope and pray that my colleagues will find the courage to join me in opposing this misguided and this dangerous bill. More than 70% of Americans support same-sex marriage. 
The bill fast-tracked following the Supreme Court's overturning of Roe v. Wade and Justice Clarence Thomas suggesting the court reconsider rulings like same-sex marriage. Tammy Baldwin, the nation's first openly gay senator, says this bill was personal. We can put to rest the worries of millions of loving couples who are concerned that someday an activist Supreme Court may take their rights and freedoms away. The bill now heads to President Biden's desk for signature, and he says it will bring peace of mind to millions of couples across the country. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Ten minutes past the hour, 67 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, Amazon is rolling out a new video feed that you can help, that can help you while you're shopping. We'll look at how it works. That's before 530. And after the break, local law enforcement trading in uniforms for Santa hats to help some families in need. We'll hear from them in just moments. 67 degrees. Oh, it's another kind of yuck morning. And Mike says, hey, just a couple more days of this kind of repeat weather before a cold front comes in. He'll tell us all about that when we come back. Turning now to the holidays, we're just over two weeks away from Christmas. And local law enforcement traded in their uniforms or Santa hats to help some families in need. It's part of the Blue Santa toy distribution put on by Blue Cares. More than 80 families were able to go to the Salv Salvation Army to take pictures with Santa and take some toys home on Thursday. There's a lot of need and we are fortunate to be in a position that we have a good relationship with the councilwoman where we're able to find, you know, what we can do to help families. Blue Cares has hosted the event since 1976. For those who can afford gifts for the holidays, you can also help by donating toys to the cost. 514, 67 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, the feds are blocking a blockbuster deal that could have a huge impact on the tech world. We'll look at why in your Tech Bites. Discover Card could reduce the number of unwanted calls and emails. Introducing Discover Online Privacy Protection. Discover will help remove your personal data from 10 popular people search websites. Online Privacy Protection. Free from Discover. Pain hits fast. So get relief fast. Only Tylenol Rapid Release Gels have laser drilled holes. They release medicine fast for fast pain relief. And now, get relief without a pill with Tylenol Dissolve Packs. Relief without the water. Lay down your head and show me if you like it. Lend me your ears and read me like a bird. Versace Bright Crystal at Macy's, the fragrance destination. In today's Tech Bites, Microsoft versus the Federal Trade Commission. The agency is suing to block the company's proposed $69 billion takeover of video game publisher Activision Blizzard. The FTC claims it would harm consumers by weakening competition, but Microsoft denies that. Two new Google Chrome features will prolong battery life and boost computer performance. Energy saver mode kicks in when your battery level dips to 20%, limiting certain visuals and background activity. And Memory Saver allows faster browsing by prioritizing your tabs. You will have to download those updates. Finally, Amazon is rolling out Inspire. It is a new video feed that allows shoppers to browse content created by influencers, brands, and other customers. Users can customize the feature based on personal interests. It will be available on the Amazon app. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. All right, the family's all here, and we've already had an interesting morning on the roads, Stephen. You know, better news to report out there, guys. That crash cleared out. So uh, better news out there for Tenet Kulev. But let's get a different shot around town, give our viewers a peek about what they can expect uh, in and around the Alamo City. There's Tenet the Y. Not a lot of traffic, and my commute to work was quite nice this morning. But uh, definitely keep your focus on the road. Not a lot out there, but still, we do have a few folks getting their morning started early with us, so you can expect to see some uh, delays as the morning commute does get going. But taking you right to the map, that crash was reported right here at 410 South Bend at Gulebra Road. Again, it's cleared out, but uh, it did appear that two vehicles may have been involved. 
Giving you a wide look at the map, though, not a lot else to show you out there. But as I mentioned, you can always expect some road closures that will take place at least throughout the weekend and into the early parts of December. So mentioned this yesterday, utility work right here along State Highway 16 Bandera Road. It started on Monday and part of it will wrap up today. That's December 9th and happy it's Friday. Nine in the morning to three in the afternoon is when drivers will see alternating lane closures in both directions from loop 1604 to Diamond K Trail. But weekend plans, grab those phones right now and scan the QR code now popping up on your screen that will take you to our KSAT traffic page. Know which roads to avoid and what closures to expect. Scroll to the bottom of the page and you'll find a full list there, Mike. Thank you very much, sir. Not only have we not needed coat sweaters, but fireplaces. So why not turn it into a nice little cozy little spot for Elf on the Shelf after a full day's work. It's a great little. I love that little display and little decoration there. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. All right. Yeah, you may want to get the fireplace ready for late next week because it'll finally feel like December again, but not for the next few days. Same old start. We've got a lot of clouds out there. A hint of fog. A visibility is still pretty good out there at the airport. Still being reported at 10 miles, but it has dropped somewhat there at Port SA. Pleasanton has actually improved just a little bit. New Braunfels has dropped down and and a lot more thick fog off to the east around Gonzales. So you got 10, go down 37. You're going to run into some of the thickest fog and then a little bit down 35. And again, these numbers will continue to kind of fluctuate and change over the next couple of hours. So just kind of watch that. Obviously, with some of those low clouds out there, a little bit of mist is going to be possible. So the roads are going to be on the damp side. Temperatures are above the normal high temperature and about 25 above where we should be. Yesterday, we tied the record for the warmest low temperature for yesterday's day. And this morning, temperatures, again, aren't going to be moving all that much at all because of the high humidity, because of all the cloud cover out there, and that little 10% chance for mist drizzle. That'll be the situation through the morning commute. Then we start to see more sunshine mixed in. That'll get us up to 77 at noon, and then we're going to top off at 81. So 15 above normal later on today and call it partly cloudy skies gonna look a lot like it did yesterday at times a few more clouds than uh, at times a lot in the way of some sunshine. So here's a longer range computer model and it's got morning clouds some sunshine in the afternoon. Same thing tomorrow and then tomorrow in the afternoon. I think we keep a few more clouds around and we're going to have a chance for a few showers around here. Little disturbance moves through later on tomorrow evening and then into early Sunday morning. It's not going to be a big rain event by any stretch, but just a couple of regular old showers kind of popping up here. More clouds around on Monday and then Tuesday. Here comes the front that may squeeze out a couple of showers as well, and that will start to eventually pull down the cooler air and then we clear on out. So it's going to be pretty good looking as it's looking right now for the latter part of next week, as well as more December like temperatures and then some. It's actually going to be on the cool side of things by late next week. 77 today at noon, mostly cloudy skies and then we'll call it partly cloudy later on today. 81 high temperature way above normal. Keep doing the same thing tomorrow as well as Sunday. A couple of those showers late tomorrow night into early Sunday. Again, just a few of them here and there. More Morning mist and fog all the way through Monday and Tuesday morning. Then the front will move through about midday. So pretty much steady or even slightly dropping temperatures throughout the day. Tuesday, low 60s Wednesday, mid 50s for high on Thursday. Yay. Hey. <laughs> Yay. Yay. I, now, one of those camera shots, Mike, just in the last few minutes looks like it's getting murky. I don't see which one it is, but you wouldn't be at all be surprised if things change. No, and, that, and just like yesterday and every other day this week where, you right. know, all of a sudden things are fine. You get a little mm -hmm. bit of that fog to move in here, and yeah, it'll get thick at times. All right, if I see it, I'll let you know. Right now, about 524, 67 degrees. Up next, Tom Cruise is getting a huge award. That's not for acting. Plus, a major movie star is going to the land of Oz. We'll explain in your morning spotlight. This morning, one of Hollywood's biggest stars being honored with a major award sh at a major award show, rather, but not for his acting. And an international movie star is headed to the land of Oz. David Daniel explains in today's Hollywood Minute. I'm just trying to make the best movie I can. Tom Cruise is set to receive the Producers Guild of America's Selznick Achievement Award, which goes to a producer or producing team for an extraordinary body of work in motion pictures. Cruise began producing his films with 1996's Mission Impossible. The PGA said in a statement, Tom approaches producing with the same meticulous attention to detail he brings to all of his professional endeavors. He'll be honored at the 34th Producers Guild Awards, February 25th in Beverly Hills. I think I needed all these experiences that I had to go through as an actor 
to bring me to this place. Michelle Yeoh appears headed to the land of Oz. Variety reports the Everything Everywhere All at Once star has joined the cast of the Wicked movies. She'll reportedly play Madame Morrible, a headmistress at Shiz University. The two-part feature adaptation of the Wizard of Oz prequel is due in theaters December of 2024 and 2025. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Now 528, 67 degrees. Up next at 530, we'll look at the triple-demic that's taking hold across the country, why flu cases are soaring at near COVID-19 levels. Plus, an experimental treatment showing promise for breast cancer patients. We'll look at why it seems to be working and how it can help people in the future. And Brittany Griner has officially landed in San Antonio as she returns to the U.S. from Russia. Jonathan Cotto will join us live from Kelly Field in just moments. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. The 32-year-old WNBA star finally on U.S. soil. We'll have details on her arrival coming up. Also this morning on GMSA, a final conviction brings a double murder case to a close after stretching on for years. Another morning where it's just kind of muggy out there, 67 degrees. Mike says, okay, in a couple of days, things will change. He'll explain in just a bit. Good morning, everybody. We made it to Friday. It is December 9th. Happy Friday. So happy to be here with you guys this morning for Steph. Glad you are here. We'll talk to Stephen in just a moment. Mike Osterhage is about to roll the school bus. So this morning, no, that comes up a little bit later on. Okay. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. School bus is still getting warmed up. So oh, actually, okay. you don't need to warm it up this morning. <laughs> but uh, take a look outside right now, and you will see that we've got, yeah, same old morning, only four more. We'll, we'll do the countdown. So, yeah, this morning and then four more mornings like this. Then we have the front moving through. So I guess that may be a little bit... Uh, a little bit easier to, to take this kind of weather as long as there's the end in sight. 67 degrees right now. Dew point stands at 64. A bunch of humidity out there, obviously, and not much of a breeze. And so when you have the very high humidity and light or no wind, that's when you start to see some fog. So visibility, it was 10 miles, 9 miles. Still not bad, but just that, that little hint of fog out there at the airport. Four miles at Port SA. Same thing, New Braunfels. And throughout the metropolitan area, it's doing pretty well. But as you can see, Pleasanton is down to a mile and a quarter, quarter mile at Gonzales. And then further, most of the fog this morning is down to the south and to the southeast. And then obviously there are hints of it out there to the west. So it seems to be uh, most everybody has a little bit of fog. But again, the thickest is down to the south and southeast. Temperatures are in the mid 60s right now. We are anywhere from 20 to 25 degrees above normal. Mold is on the high side. Of course, the updated count comes out a little bit later on this morning. We'll make it up to 77 at noon, starting to see a little bit of sunshine mixed in, then just a good mixture of sunshine and clouds. Call it partly cloudy later on today. And yep, going to be another basically hot day. I mean, 15 degrees above normal up to 81. Weekend forecast does include a couple of showers. Got outdoor plans, wouldn't change them at all. And then again, we will take a look exactly when that front's going to be moving through next week and how cool will it get in behind it. Details in just a few minutes. Traffic authority. So that big accident yeah, gone, right? It's gone. And you were talking about the southeast side, Mike. Uh, let's get a look here at 37 at Fair Avenue. Some of the trans guide cameras here are catching a little bit of what Mike was mentioning, but uh, not too bad. We can actually make out traffic there. So We've seen worse mornings, of course, but still drive safe. Use caution as you get the morning roll in here. Uh, now we take you to the map and of course this early in the morning, it's very rare when we see a big issue pop up. We did have one off of 410 at uh, Culebra Road over on the west side, but that is already cleared out and you can see now the roads are pretty clear as well. Lots of green on the screen and if you plan to travel into the Alamo City, you have plenty of time. 29 minutes, I-10, still pretty green from Seguin in those westbound lanes. Just a little more than half an hour if you're traveling in 80, on the 87 from Lavernia in those northbound lanes. And for our friends in Floresville, 28 minutes is what you can expect if you plan to travel to the Alamo City. But let's get you on rotation here. While 37 at Fair Avenue looks pretty fair, we get you back over here and you can see 410 at Gulebra where that crash was reported. Traffic is moving a lot better even here at I-10 at De Zavala. Mark Cerro. Stephen, thank you. New this morning, Brittany Griner officially on U.S. soil. She landed at Kelly Field about an hour ago at, at this morning. We've had crews overnight on standby. Jonathan Cota joins us. He was out there as the plane landed and taxied. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Mark. You know, a huge sigh of relief, surely, for the fans and friends and family of the 32-year-old WNBA star who finally touched down here at Kelly Field 
and U.S. soil. We know she's going to be making her way over to Bamsi uh, to receive medical attention or receiving medical evaluation. But let's take a look at the images of her landing here at Kelly Field just moments ago. But, you know, Mark, Sarah, there's been a lot of work to get to this point, a lot of bargaining, a lot of negotiations. The notorious Russian arms dealer Victor Bout with the U.S. swapped in exchange for Griner's release. We know Bout was arrested in 2010. He was sentenced to 25 years for aiding a terrorist organization and conspiring to kill Americans. Sources say the prisoner swap came together in just the last few days. Biden hoped to also secure the freedom of former U.S. Marine Paul Whelan. Important to mention, he was uh, imprisoned on espionage and Russia charges for four years. Russia rejecting the proposal. Coming back out live, I can tell you that this is a story that we're going to on top of and follow all morning long and bring you the latest again. Griner is due to arrive at Brook Army Medical Center and we'll be bringing you the latest from there. Reporting live from Kelly Field, Jonathan Cotto. Thank you, Jonathan. New details this morning on the final conviction that's bringing a double murder case to close after a long legal battle. On Thursday, it only took four and a half hours to find Richard Montes guilty of murdering a teen and an elderly man in 2018. Prosecutors say Montes and, and two other suspects shot and killed 69-year-old Benito Gallegos near the Casiano homes. Another bullet ended up inside a nearby apartment, killing 14-year-old Angel Gareba. You ruined my life, my kid's life. You ruined my son's life. That man took everything from me. Everything. Montez is now expected to serve life in prison. The two other suspects were his cousins. They took plea deals in this case and will serve a little more than 20 years in prison. In some health news this morning, children from the age of six months to five years now eligible for more protection from COVID-19. On Thursday, the FDA approved an updated vaccine from Pfizer that is deemed safe for kids. The vaccines fight the original strain of COVID and Omicron. Pediatricians are concerned because the number of young children getting their COVID shot is low across the U.S. Meanwhile, U.S. hospitals are about as overwhelmed now as they were during the Omicron surge. A significant contributor is the triple threat of viruses, so-called triple-demic. Amy Kiley reports some doctors say it's affecting children more than others. Imagine having 10 families check in to the ER every single hour for 24 hours. Johns Hopkins University says flu cases are higher than normal. RSV has been on the rise and more coronavirus variants are developing. Hospital capacity is about as low now as during the Omicron peak, according to new government data. Some pediatricians say the so-called triple-demic is hitting kids especially hard. We think it's just a bad cold and it isn't. It can be so much worse. She's talking about the flu and its potential complications in children. The pneumonia that can come after, the ear infections that can come after, the dehydration that lands kids in the hospital, the sinusitis that can happen in older kids, even kids' febrile seizures. Medical experts strongly recommend getting a flu shot. And speaking of vaccines, children as young as six months now can get an updated shot for COVID-19. For treatment, Walgreens is starting free home delivery of prescription Paxlovid. The CDC says vaccines and antiviral therapies are still in the works for RSV. But pandemic mitigation strategies help stop all three viruses, according to this expert. It's our individual choices that are going to help protect ourselves, our loved ones, and our other community members. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. 539, 66 degrees. Coming up on GMSA, an HEB proposal you don't want to miss why in an employee's reaction is now going viral. And an experimental treatment is helping breast cancer patients. We'll look at how targeted therapy works after the break. Four more days. It's what Mike keeps saying because, I mean, take a look out there. It's kind of like a, you know, Groundhog's Day, this repeat weather, muggy, 66 degrees. When we can expect that cold front when we come back. An experimental treatment is showing promise for people with the most common form of advanced stage breast cancer. That's according to results from a phase three clinical trial at the San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium. It showed when people took the oral treatment combined with an endocrine therapy already used to treat advanced breast cancer, the time without disease progression doubled. 
Experts say it's important to continue watching for the results of further trials to see whether the treatment impacts overall survival rates. Right now at KSAT.com, you can watch a video on this that may have already popped up in your social media feed. A wedding proposal at an HEB took this employee by surprise. <laughs> Jaw on the floor. <laughs> Viewers can't quite see the proposal, but they saw the stunned reaction of the employee who witnessed the event <laughs> stopped in his tracks right there with the uh, cooler full of tamales, which is a very big deal to stop in your tracks this time of year. Oh. Check it out right now on ksat.com. We're his clapping. his We're clapping. Uh, name tag said Eduardo on it. Uh -huh. We love you. Yes. We love you. All right, the Salvation Army Kettles are out and about throughout San Antonio local businesses and media, including us here right at KSAT. We are competing to raise money for families in need during this holiday season. No matter how big or small, every donation helps. The Salvation Army says a $50 donation provides a homeless mother with three children a one-night stay at the shelter, including hot meals. You can donate by scanning this QR code on your screen right now or head to ksat.com. Season of Giving is here. Several organizations working towards helping families for the holidays. We've already talked about that all morning long. That includes Toys for Tots. Volunteers and hundreds of local businesses are helping. More than 4,000 families are expected to get gifts this year. It's 544 and 66 degrees. Scanning the cameras with our friends over at Transkype 35 upper lower level at Brooklyn. Always gets going this time of morning. There's 35 at Evans. Stephen Cavazos is anxiously awaiting to give us all a live update. 547. We're going to check in with Stephen Cavazos and look at the road, Stephen. You know, uh, not a lot of work over here for Friday. Hey, thankfully, it's been a pretty quiet morning, but that's going to change. That always is the case. Check out 37 at Southeast Military. Wow, we have a pretty foggy shot out there, but drive safe. Use those low beams if you are still in the city, but take out uh, take out 410 at Old Pearsall. A lot busier as the commute does really get rolling. We're getting closer to that 6 a.m. hour, so of course things are going to change. But right now, enjoy the roadways if you can. It's taking you to the map. Just a lot of green out there, but of course we still have some active road closures to be on the look out for 410. Now, while we did have some issues there earlier, that's cleared out, but we're going to see some work take place up, at least up until Monday, December 11th, some bridge work. And actually, that starts overnight, so watch out. 8 in the evening to 5 in the morning is when you'll see full main lane closures uh, in both directions right there from Bandera Road to State Highway 151. But you know where to find that information. KSAT.com slash traffic. Scroll to the bottom of the page and you'll find a full list of closures there. But right now, I would say things are moving pretty smooth uh, as we are rolling on into the 6 a.m. hour, but it'll probably get very busy by then. Thank you, Stephen. Interesting that uh, 37 Southeast military camera there where the fog is thicker yeah, heading southeast down toward side. Pleasanton. Yeah, southeast side down there. So uh, and just watch out for more fog this morning. Okay. You know, little bits here and there, a little bit of mist and drizzle. Yesterday we did clear out enough to see a gorgeous moon rise. Wow. It was the full moon, the full cold moon as it's uh, known, but obviously the name doesn't apply this year because it ain't cold out there. But yeah, an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous picture. Thank you very much for that. That's spectacular. You may see the moon rise tonight because once again, we are going to have clouds breaking up this afternoon. And as the, the sun sets and just when the moon is full or we're technically one day past that as the sun is setting, the moon is rising this morning. Uh, as you can see, it looks a little bit fuzzy out there as far as the, uh, the fog at the airport, nine miles visibility, but it has dropped slightly at Port SA Stinson five. Then you go down toward Pleasanton just a mile and three quarters. So again, that shot there at 37 Southeast military heading down south, running into a little bit of that fog and more of it further on down to the south and then heading out 10. You're going to run into a lot of fog around Gonzales and just hints of it out in portions of the hill country. But again, these numbers can change as they have been doing. It's getting a little bit thicker as we get into the heart of the morning commute. 67 in town, 68 Stinson and Converse and then same thing up there at Canyon Lake. New Braunfels also at 68 degrees, well above normal temperatures. A uh, whole bunch of humidity. Of course, you get above 60 and you definitely feel some of that humidity. That's sort of that threshold where you get below 60. It does not feel as humid, but this is going to be sticking around for the next few days, at least the next four days maybe four and a half because the front moves through midday on Tuesday. So temperatures stay steady this morning. Lots of clouds, a little bit of mist here, some fog, some sunshine then starts to work its way in here late morning by noon 77. 
and we top off at 81 later on today. Again, we'll have uh, call it partly cloudy skies like yesterday, where at times there are going to be a lot more sunshine out there this afternoon, just enough to obviously heat us up. All right tail of different air masses. We have this tropical air mass we're sitting in right now, and then it's four below up there at Bismarck and freezing as far south as Wichita. So you look at the upper level steering winds. Here's this southerly branch of the jet stream, which keeps us in this southwesterly flow. This is what's keeping the kind of the dividing line between the cold air and the very warm air. And we are obviously on the warm side of that, and that thing is not going to be moving anytime soon. So the coldest air stays well up there to the north of us. Now, now, we've got that low coming in here out of the Gulf of Alaska, which is going to continue to work its way in our direction. The center of the low is going to stay well up to the north. So as far as any rain chances with this thing, it's going to be very minimal as the front moves on through. As it comes through Tuesday, it may squeeze out a couple of showers, but it's not going to be any big deal. But that will that low will sweep up to the northeast, pull the front through, and at least open up the door. Now, it's not going to be a huge blast of Arctic air, but it will definitely drop temperatures down as we go into the mid and latter portion of next week. So that's going to feel much more like December then by this time next week, actually starting uh, Tuesday night into Wednesday. 73, 73, 77 degrees at noon, mostly cloudy skies, and then a high temperature makes it up to 81 later on today with partly cloudy skies. Tomorrow, same situation in the morning, mist, drizzle, a little bit of patchy fog, a few more clouds in the afternoon. We do have a chance for a couple of showers tomorrow night, overnight into Sunday. A little bit of a disturbance moving through. It's not going to be any big deal, but then we'll have some sunshine mixed in in the afternoon. Same thing on Monday, you know, morning mist, fog out there, as well as Tuesday morning. Then the front moves through, so we'll start off mild Tuesday, then winds will shift around. The humidity will drop down somewhat and we're going to be clearing out by the latter part of next week. So good looking latter half of next week. Four days and counting. All this fog and kind of drizzle that we've been getting on and off. Um, it has made my backyard green. At, read my mind. And yes. I look it looks like something, you know, out of like like a British like backyard garden, like yes. a little cottage. Very That's lush and green for mine sure. Mine didn't look quite that good, but at least there's a little bit of green mixed in with the what was no grass for a while. So exactly. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. 552, 66 degrees. Take a look at the lotto numbers. Pick three, one zero four, fireball eight, daily four, two one three four, fireball six. Cash five, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty four, twenty six, Texas two step five, fourteen, twenty three, thirty two with a bonus ball of 34. Mega is tonight, it's up to $379 million. Good morning, coming up here on GMA, Brittany Griner back on U.S. soil after her nearly 10-month ordeal in custody in Russia. How it all came together, plus the Americans still left behind. We're going to talk to Paul Whelan's brother about the fight to bring the former Marine home. Also this morning, we do have an ABC News exclusive with the One Tree Hill star whose husband was killed in a lightning strike on a boat over the summer. What he said before it happened and how she is honoring him. And then I'm live here in Kentucky with a very special GMA Gives Back. We are shining the spotlight, spotlight on a woman who went above and beyond for her community. This is her store. It is a grocery store that is critical to the community. It was devastated by flash flooding. Lives were lost. Homes were lost. But now we get to celebrate this woman as we give back because she has given so many folks uh, their lives back as they rebuild this community. You'll want to see it on Good Morning America. Looking ahead, San Antonio Public Library is getting in the holiday spirit. We have some fun activities planned for those young and old. Coming up on GMSA at 9 today, we'll have someone from SAPL speaking with us about some of the events coming up. All the programs are free, so if you're looking for something to keep the kids busy during winter break, or you have some free time yourself, you want to hear about all of this. Tune in for our Q&A coming up on GMSA at 9. We hope to see you then. We'll head in the next hour of GMSA. It's our big story of the morning. Brittany Griner touching down here in San Antonio, back on U.S. soil. Jonathan Cotto is standing by with the latest developments and what happens next. And Trans Guide, this is the one where we've seen, we've seen the, uh, the low clouds and the fog and maybe a little bit of mist start to reappear this morning at 37 and Southeast Military. Have no fear though, Stephen is tracking any developments on the roads and Mike has your weekend forecast coming up. You're watching GMSA on a Friday. We'll be right back.
Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. It is Friday. It is December 8th, or rather 9th. We'll get to weather and traffic in just a few moments few minutes, but first our big story of the morning. WNBA star Brittany Griner has landed here in San Antonio at Kelly Field and now on her way to Bamsi. This all follows her release from Russia. Jonathan Cotto has been following this story for us all morning and was there when the plane touched down. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. Yes, lots of anticipation behind Brittany Griner's arrival here at Kelly Field. Her plane touching down on U.S. soil here in San Antonio at Kelly Field. Yesterday, President Joe Biden making the announcement that a swap had been made for Griner's release. The 32-year-old is a double Olympic champion and a seven-time All-Star player in the WNBA. She was detained February 17th at Moscow's airport. She had been on her way to Ekaterinburg to rejoin her club for the playoffs after spending time I'm at home in the United States. She was found with vape cartridges containing cannabis oil in her luggage that violated Russian law. In the U.S., Griner had a prescription for medical marijuana to relieve pain from chronic injuries. But Griner pleaded guilty to the charges of possessing and smuggling illegal drugs, but insisted she had made an honest mistake and had not intended to break Russian law. She has testified that she did not understand how the cartridges had ended up in her luggage and speculated that she could have packed them inadvertently as she rushed to make her flight. However, she was convicted, found guilty of deliberately bringing cannabis-infused vape cartridges into Russia on August 4th. A Russian court sentenced her to nine years in prison. The maximum sentence for her, that charge was 10 years. Her attorney at the time argued that was grossly inappropriate. We know her lawyer said on November 17th that she had been taken to a female penal colony in Yabas, a town in the Mordovia region southeast of Moscow. But we do know that this morning Griner will be heading to Brook Army Medical Center where she will be uh, attended medically. We're told she is in uh, healthy conditions, but of course this is a story that we're going to continue to follow closely. Reporting from Kelly Field, Jonathan Cotto. Thank you, Jonathan. This is a story, of course, that we're following closely on air and on our website. You can find complete coverage on our homepage. Just head to ksat.com and look for these stories. Well, obviously we go on the air at 430 in the morning. It wasn't too bad this morning, but now at a couple of these camera shots, we're starting to see a little bit of that fog, a little bit of those low clouds. And Mike Ostrage joins us now to talk more about what to expect for our Friday. Friday is going to be like Thursday, like Wednesday. Well, yeah, Tuesday. so it's Wednesday. just, the, again, this deja vu kind of weather. And, and like the past couple of mornings where we've started off okay, and then the fog has started to get thicker in some spots as it is doing. Now, it's just kind of, it looks fuzzy off in the distance out there at the airport. Visibility is at eight miles, so it has dropped another mile in just the past uh, couple of minutes there. Mile and three quarters, Pleasanton, five Stinson. Port SA now is starting to see more fog developing. Go down 37. And you are going to run into uh, some of that fog, even right around uh, 37 Southwest Military. Some of it is showing up on some of the trans guide cameras. Then notice how this is also off to the east where it was just around Gonzales, starting to sort of move in a little bit more westward in towards Seguin and then out to the west. Not as much fog. Most of it is in the eastern half of our viewing area this morning where some of the thickest is New Braunfels at four miles visibility as of right now, six up the road in Austin. But again, this is going to continue to to sort of evolve over the course of the next couple of hours. 67 degrees right now. We are anywhere from 20, 25 degrees above normal and actually at or above the normal high temperature right now. Mold is on the high side. Update account comes out in about an hour, hour and a half or so. At 69 degrees, so temperatures are going to stay steady this morning. A lot of clouds, mist and fog. Then we'll see some sunshine by late morning into the early afternoon hours, like the past couple of days, 77 at noon. And we're going to be topping off at 81. 15 degrees above normal with uh, partly cloudy skies. So a lot of folks are going to be, be seeing a whole lot of sunshine later on today. The weekend, well, this trend continues, but at least a couple of showers, not a big deal as far as rain, but a couple of showers late tomorrow night into Sunday. The countdown for the front, four days. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, anything big going on out there? Not yet, Mike, and that's great. You know, but this is a shot that, yeah, we showed our viewers a little bit earlier, 37 at Southeast Military. Let's get a look at the TransGuide camera because the conditions obviously are pretty uh, foggy out there. And you can see that we do have a few folks out there in the north and southbound lanes traveling along I-37. So 
one of those busy areas, especially as the commute does get rolling. So just make sure to drive with caution. Check those low beams as well if you're still uh, planning to head out and have to drive through 37. But thankfully, no delays there. If you see it there on the map, 37 right now, you're still in the green if you're traveling in or out of San Antonio. Now, speaking of travel times, let's see what we can expect right now if you plan to travel into San Antonio. 28 minutes. Now, uh, while we are not seeing a slowdown on I-37 northbound, that is actually a little bit slower than what we would normally uh, see on a regular day, but 28 minutes is what we can see right now. So again, just a little bit of a slowdown on 37 northbound, but nothing too major. Highway 90, about 30 minutes, and that arrival from Lytle looks to be about 17 minutes. So let's go ahead and get you back here on Transguide 37 at Southeast Military, and as we get you on rotation back here in town at 410 at Gulebra, you can see that traffic's been moving, and we've been off to a decent start, but we'll see how long that will last, especially as more folks get the commute rolling. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Topping your morning headlines, a history making vote on Capitol Hill, the House passing the Respect for Marriage Act. The bill codifies federal protections for same sex and interracial marriages and now heads to President Biden's desk. ABC's Justin Finch has more from Washington. On the House floor, a milestone moment. The motion is adopted. <laughs> In a rare show of bipartisan solidarity, Congress passing the Respect for Marriage Act, enshrining marriage equality into federal law. 39 House Republicans and 12 in the Senate joining every Democrat to pass legislation protecting same-sex and interracial marriages. Some Republicans pleaded for their party members to vote no, calling the bill unnecessary. I hope and pray that my colleagues will find the courage to join me in opposing this misguided and this dangerous bill. More than 70% of Americans support same-sex marriage. The bill fast-tracked following the Supreme Court's overturning of Roe v. Wade and Justice Clarence Thomas suggesting the court reconsider rulings like same-sex marriage. Tammy Baldwin, the nation's first openly gay senator, says this bill was personal. We can put to rest the worries of millions of loving couples who are concerned that someday an activist Supreme Court may take their rights and freedoms away. The bill now heads to President Biden's desk for signature, and he says it will bring peace of mind to millions of couples across the country. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Now some good news for Spurs fans. They broke their 11 game losing streak last night against the Houston Rockets. Right now both teams at the bottom of the Western Conference standings. Seven Spurs were in double figures. Keldon Johnson led the way with 32 in the third. The Spurs knocked down four straight threes. At one point Spurs were even up by 20. Final score from the AT&T Center. Spurs finally win one 118 to 109. You know it feels good to be back in the win column for sure. Um, I don't think any of us have, has lost that many games in a row. You know, you got to stay positive, continue to push forward every single day, continue to uh, watch film, get better. Just con keep controlling what we could control. Uh, We'd be able to, you know, get out of the slump sooner, sooner or later. Next up for the Spurs, they're hitting the road to South Beach. Tomorrow they'll take on the Heat in Miami. Tip-off is set for 4 p.m. Well, happening tonight, the UTSA Rowdy River Rally is scheduled for tonight at 7 at the Arneson River Theater. This comes after their big championship win. Next up, UTSA will take on Troy at Duluth Trading Cure Bowl in Orlando next Friday. 608, 66 degrees. We'll be right back.